introduction the driver's title may be finally decided with a record fourth title for Lewis Hamilton, but that doesn't mean we won't be able to see a cracking race in Brazil this weekend. Red Bull have been going from strength to strength lately, and Max Verstappen will be feeling confident he can once again prove to be a genuine threat for the race win, while Daniel Ricciardo will be looking to come out of the shadow of his young teammate and close out his season with a highlight result of his own. Free from the pressure of challenging for the title, Ferrari might finally put in a performance to match the potential their car has shown over the second half of the season, while Kimi Raikkonen will enjoy the opportunity of being allowed to challenge Sebastian Vettel for position and maybe grab a victory of his own before the season ends. And of course, that's not to forget about the chance of Mercedes with Lewis Hamilton and indeed Valtteri Bottas sure to be in the thick of the action, it has the potential to be a great race Brazil has given us multiple championship winning drivers Iron Senna, Nelson Piquet and Emerson Fittipaldi, and while each of these champions won their home Grand Prix on two occasions, it is Frenchman Alain Prost who holds the record for the most Brazilian Grand Prix victories, with six wins in total. If the active drivers Felipe Massa and Sebastian Vettel have two wins each, while Lewis Hamilton and Kimi Raikkonen have won here one time each although Raikkonen was also given a win on the day in 2003, that was subsequently taken away and given to Jordan's Giancarlo Fisichella. Fernando Alonso may not have won here, but he has some happy memories as he won the driver's title here in 2005 and 2006. Lewis Hamilton wrapped up his first title here on the last lap in 2008, while Kimi Raikkonen secured his only driver's title to date here as well 2007, while Sebastian Vettel secured his 2012 title here. Last year was run in awful conditions, with plenty of incident, safety cars and red flags to contend with as the cars and tires struggled to stay on the track. Lewis Hamilton emerged victorious to keep his championship hopes alive, while Rosberg did just enough to come in second and keep the driver's title within his grasp. But it was third place man Max Verstappen that had everyone talking, putting in a scintillating drive, using lines that the other drivers didnt seemed to know were possible as he carved through the field, and producing one of the more spectacular saves of the season when he lost his car coming onto the straight. In the underpowered Red Bull, Verstappen had to gamble in the conditions try to gain an advantage, and he lost out with a switch to enters when the rain continued to fall, but he put in a stellar drive to recover to third place at the end. Sergio Perez handed Force India a terrific result with fourth just ahead of Sebastian Vettel's Ferrari. History Brazilian Grand Prix is a tale of two cities, Sao Paulo and Rio de Janeiro. The first recorded official motor race in Brazil, which was organized by the Sao Paulo Automobile Club, was staged in 1908, a 75km race on public roads around the suburbs of Sao Paulo, from Itape Serica de Hacera to the Parque Antarctica in Sao Paulo a race won for the record books by Silvio Penteado in a Fiat. The success of the race led to the Brazilian Automobile Club BAC staging an event the following year in Rio de Janeiro, a 72 km race on public roads around Sao Gancalo that event in 1909 being won by Gastão de Almeida in a Berlite. The BAC joined the FIA in 1926, and in 1932 they staged a nation hill climb from Rio de Janeiro to Petropolis, an event won by the King of the Mountains Hansteck driving his beautiful Mercedes-Benz SSKL. The Rio de Janeiro Grand Prix was first staged in 1933 won by Brazilian driver Manuel de Teff driving in Alfa Romeo, an event raced on public roads, across the wonderful if slightly crazy Gavia circuit, an 11 km blast from the center of town out to the sea, climbing up along the cliffs before doubling back and winding up through the mountains before dropping back into the town, the track surface changing from asphalt to concrete to sand and gravel to cobbles along the way, with tram lines to contend with to boot. As if the circuit WASNT difficult enough, the drivers also had to contend with the spectators lining the side of the roads. The race would continue to be run up until 1954, with the track gaining the nickname the Devil's Springboard. The track would see its share of incident, with the local hero Irie New Korea being killed in an opening lap crash here in 1935 as his car crashed off a tree and threw Korea into the canal, the smashed car following after him. Despite the danger of the circuit, the event drew plenty of interest from international drivers, notable names such as Alberto Ascari and Juan Manuel Fangio taking part over the years. Sao Paulo would stage its own Grand Prix, with a race held on a course around the city's roads in 1936. That race was marred by tragedy, French driver Hela Nice the stage name used by Marriott Helena de Lingle, a successful model and dancer at the time crashing as she attempted to pass Manuel de Teff for third place. Haley reportedly hit a policeman tasked with keeping the crowds off the street who were surging to see the action. 
Kayla was lucky to survive after being thrown from her car, having initially been feared dead, but five spectators were killed in the crash. The race was won by Carlo Pinticuta in an Alfa Romeo entered by the Scuderia Ferrari. This crash would lead to the stopping of racing on the streets of Sao Paulo, which would lead to the building of the Interlagos circuit, which would go on to stage the Sao Paulo Grand Prix from 1940. The inaugural race at the track won by Arthur Nascimento Jr. driving an Alfa Romeo until 1947. The first Brazilian Grand Prix would be staged in 1972 at Interlagos, a non-championship race that would prove as a test run for its introduction to the World Championship calendar in 1973. That 1972 race featured a number of the Formula One regulars, and was won by Carlos Reutemann in a Brabham. The first Brazilian Grand Prix to count for the World Championship was won in 1973 by local favorite Emerson Fittipaldi driving a Lotus. Interlagos continued to host the Brazilian Grand Prix through to 1977. Fittipaldi won again in 1974 on his way to his second world title in a race cut short by rain. Another Sao Paulo favorite, Carlos Pace, won his only Grand Prix in 1975, leading home Fittipaldi to the delight of the home crowd. The track would be renamed after Carlos Pace after. He was killed in a plane crash in 1977. In 1976, Niki Lauda broke the local dominance of the event, winning for Ferrari. 1977 saw Carlos Reutemann win for Ferrari, a feat he would repeat in 1978 when the Brazilian Grand Prix moved to the newly built Jacare Pagua circuit in Rio de Janeiro, a flat track in contrast to the hilly Interlagos. That race marking the first Grand Prix win for a car running, Michelin tires also the first win Grand Prix win for a radial tire. The Grand Prix returned to Interlagos for 1979 a race dominated by Ligier, with Jacques Lafite leading home teammate Patrick de Paler in 1980 with René Arnaud taking his first F1 victory for Renault. From 1981 the Brazil Grand Prix relocated back to Rio de Janeiro, where it would run until 1989, Interlagos being deemed unsafe for modern Formula One cars. The 1981 race in Rio was won by Carlos Reutemann for Williams, while Nigel Mansell took the last victory there in 1989 on his first drive for Ferrari. In between Alain Prost and McLaren would take five wins in Rio, the other two going to Rio hero Nelson Piquet Brabham Williams. The Brazil Grand Prix was brought back to Interlagos for 1990, with the circuit after undergoing a major overhaul in a bid to bring it up to the standards required for F1. Alain Prost took the first win on the new shorter track for Ferrari, with Sao Paulo's latest Formula One here Ayrton Senna losing the chance to win his home race as he tangled with the lap Tyrell of Satoru Nakajima while leading Prost, Senna too impatient in lapping the Tyrell and forced to pit, costing him the chance for a home victory. In 1991 it all came good for Senna, who finally won his first Brazilian Grand Prix, Senna famously having to be helped out of his McLaren exhausted, and struggling to lift the Brazilian flag and trophy aloft on the podium after just hanging on to win from Ricardo Patrese's Williams, Senna finishing with a gearbox stuck in sixth gear for the latter part of the race. In 2003 Kimi Raikkonen was initially declared the winner of a wet race that was red flagged after Fernando Alonso's Renault collided with a loose wheel from Mark Webber's Jaguar and smashed into a tire wall, moments after Webber had crashed into the wall and totaled his Jaguar. Raikkonen had been passed on the road prior to the crash by Jordan's Giancarlo Fisichella, but was deemed the winner and received the trophy as the race result was counted two laps prior to the red flag being issued. After Jordan appealed Raikkonen had to hand the trophy over Fisichella at the next race as Jordan successfully argued that the race results should be counted from after Fisichella had passed Raikkonen Fisichella's position on the track at the timing of the red flag critical, with Fisichella deemed on review to have started an additional lap prior to the red flag being shown, so the official result was moved a lap forward to after his pass of Kimi. The following year in 2004 the race switching from its traditional early season slot to the back end of the season a win for Juan Pablo Montoya for Williams in a wet race, Montoya passing McLaren's Kimi Raikkonen in two turn four after the pair exited the pit lane nose to tail. The later position on the calendar has resulted in a number of world championships being decided in Brazil, with titles decided in 2005 and 2006, Fernando. Alonso for Renault, 2007 Kimi Raikkonen for Ferrari, 2008 Lewis Hamilton for McLaren, 2009 Jensen Button for Braun, and in 2012 Sebastian Vettel for Red Bull. The track at Interlagos has had two incarnations since it saw its first race 1940. The original circuit was much longer than the current version, running for just short of 8 kilometers, while the modern layout is a much shorter 4.3 kilometers. The original track contained most of the current layout but with additional open blasts connecting the current infield section. 
At the site of the current turn 1, the Senna S, the old track kept going, the track running outside the current turn 3 and then down a longer straight in parallel with the current straight leading to turn 4. The track then curved back through a high-speed corner and rejoined the current track after another long straight at what is now turn 6, the old circuit running the opposite direction to the current layout from the site of turn 6 back towards the site of the current turn 1, where the track would double back again through a now abandoned section of track that ran back to join the current layout at turn 7, the old layout survived with only minor changes and upgrades to the facilities until the track underwent a total overhaul as it was brought up to the standards required to bring Formula 1 back in 1990. That saw the layout we use today brought into effect, in addition to including an S-curve at the first corner connecting immediately to turn 3 and running in the opposite direction to the old circuit up to turn 7, there were further changes at the end of the lap as the infield section was reprofiled and the track was tightened at the current turn 12. The track has seen only minor changes to the layout introduced in 1990, mostly around the pit entry and exit, with the 1990 layout seeing the pit exit fed back into Turn 2, but this was moved to its current entry point on the exit of Turn 3 in 1999, with further changes to the pit entry adding of chicane and exit. The track, noted for being bumpy, has been resurfaced a number of times over the years, with 2014 the last major revision to the track surface. Circuit characteristics from the highest altitude track of the year in Mexico We come back down a bit in Brazil, but it is still the second highest track on the calendar sitting some 800 meters above sea level, so the turbos will have another tough weekend. Like Mexico the track runs anticlockwise, with 43 meters elevation change from the high point at turn 1 to the low point at turn 5, with plenty of rises and falls around a very short and sometimes bumpy 4.3 kilometers track with 15 turns, with the race distance 71 laps. From the start there is a very short sprint to the first corner just 190 meters, with the front of the grid facing slightly uphill to complicate their getaway. The first series of corners, the Senna S, comprising turns 1 and 2, is a steep downhill 90-degree left-hander turn 1 switching to a right-hander turn 2 as the track levels out, with the first DRS detection point coming just before the cars level out into turn 2. The first corner will see plenty of action during the race, with the start-finish straight hosting the second DRS activation zone on the lap, and plenty of slipping and sliding can be expected as the cars attempt to gain hold position coming down the hill into the Senna S during the race. Max Verstappen brushed his Red Bull past Kimi Raikkonen here last year, diving up the inside of the Ferrari to claim the position, and he also showed us how to get the job done at Turn 1 in the dry in 2015 for Toro Rosso, the highlight of his moves being a wonderful pass of Sergio Perez Force India, Verstappen hanging around the outside of T1 as Perez took to the middle of the track to defend the inside, with Verstappen claiming the spot on the inside in T2. Exiting turn 2 the track wins left onto a long curve turn 3, which opens out onto a long straight sloping gently downhill. The pit exit feeds into the start of the straight as the cars exit turn 3. This is where Max Verstappen simply drove around the outside of Nico Rosberg last year, Max displaying super confidence in the slippery conditions. Down this straight is the first DRS activation zone, which gives cars another chance to pull out of the slipstream and take a look as they brake hard into turn 4, a left-hander, although in the dry this is more of an opportunity to remind the car in front you are there than an out-and-out -out overtaking opportunity. Williams Felipe Massa gave the home crowd something to cheer here in 2015 as he slipped past the Lotus of Pastor Maldonado on the inside of turn 4 as the Lotus struggled on old tires at the time in the end Massa would be disqualified, handing 10th place and a final career world champion championship point for Maldonado. Of course, it is also a handy spot to get past back markers, the entry to turn 4 being the spot where the lapped arrows of Josh Verstappen famously plowed into and over the back of race leader Juan Pablo Montoya's Williams back in 2001 ruining what looked like a certain win for the fiery Colombian. Verstappen had himself been the victim of a huge crash in 1994 as he looked to pass Eddie Irvine in the Jordan as they lapped the Legier of Eric Bernard, with Verstappen losing control and rolling back across the track as Irvine swiped across him and forced him onto the grass if Brazil has been a bogey track for Lewis Hamilton, then turn 4 has been his bogey corner in 2007 he ran wide on the opening lap while challenging McLaren teammate Fernando Alonso, dropping down the field in a race that saw a world title slip from his grasp in his rookie season. In 2013 he bumped his Mercedes into Valtteri but as Williams as Valtteri came around on the outside to unlap himself, Lewis not seeming to expect the Williams being there, and picking up a puncture as well as a penalty for his trouble. In 2014 he handed Rosberg the win when spinning off here as he tried to put in a fast enough lap to leapfrog Nico in the pits. 
The track dips down at turn 4, with the cars accelerating through the left-hand curve of turn 5, the lowest point of the track. The cars run wide on the exit of turn 5 as they head on to another short straight, the cars climbing again as they move over to the left side of the track before breaking into turn 6, a fast right-hander that winds right on exit through turn 7 and on into turn 8. The cars, braking hard as the track winds back on itself through the slow right-hander. Exiting turn 8 the track dips back down as the cars wind around the long left-handed loop of turn 9, with the track moving winding right on exits as the cars arrive into the slow right-hand hairpin turn 10, with the cars starting down a short straight before curving left through turn 11, climbing the hill and braking hard at turn 12, another left-hander that winds the cars around for the stretch back to the start-finish straight. This was the spot where Ayrton Senna spun his Williams into retirement in pursuit of Michael Schumacher's Benetton in the 1994 season opener, and where Lewis Hamilton passed Timo Glock on the last lap in 2008 to secure his first driver's title. From the exit of Turn 12 the cars are flat out as they climb the hill all the way back to Turn 1, the track curving right at Turn 13, with the second DRS detection point just past the bend, the cars continuing to accelerate up the hill as the track winds around to the left, the cars flat out through the left-hand bend of Turn 14 and past the pit entry line as the curve slightly left though the last turn, Turn 15 and onto the start-finish straight, with the second DRS activation zone and a chance to attack into the Turn 1. Tires with Pirelli for the penultimate round of the Formula One season. Pirelli brings the P0 white medium, P0 yellow soft, and P0 red super soft tires, marking the final appearance of the medium compound in 2017. Interlagos is one of the shortest but most intense laps of the year, both in terms of physical demands and atmosphere. There's a succession of high speed corners, constant changes in elevation, and a local climate that is capable of both intense heat and heavy rain. Once again, the tire nomination for Brazil is softer than it has been in the past, with the medium now the hardest compound available. The three nominated compounds 1 red super soft, 2 yellow soft, 3 white medium. The circuit from a tire point of view the track was resurfaced relatively recently, which ironed out some of the famous Interlagos bumps. The second shortest lap of the season after Monaco means cars are not only nearly always turning, but also going offline to overtake. The track runs anticlockwise, with the right rear tire doing the most work in Brazil. The rapid series of corners and high energy loads put quite high demands on tires. Tires are also frequently subjected to combined lateral and longitudinal forces. Unusually, Lewis Hamilton won last year in rainy conditions without making a racing pit stop, although he did take a fresh set of wets under a red flag. In 2015, the top three stopped three times. Mario Azola, head of car racing as we saw at the last round in Mexico as well, for Brazil we are again bringing a softer tire nomination than last year, when the hard was selected, so this is likely to lead to some of the fastest ever laps of Interlagos this weekend. With a short lap, plus plenty of pit stops and overtaking, as well as a passionate Brazilian crowd and the potential for extremes of weather, this is normally a frenetic race where the strategic timing of stops is very important to try and minimize the effects of traffic. While we've gone a step softer this year, no driver has selected more than one set of the mediums, which means that the weekend will be centered around the soft and super soft compounds. What's new the super soft comes to Brazil for the first time since Pirelli entered Formula 1. Force India and Sauber completed a dedicated Pirelli tire test for 2018 after the Mexican Grand Prix, with Alfonso Celis and Charles Leclerc driving respectively. Several top drivers have been announced for the Pirelli-equipped FIA GT World Cup in Macau next weekend, including former F1 driver and Pirelli tester Lucas Di Grassi. Pirelli's European Junior Rally champion Chris Ingram dominated the Trois-Wheel Drive class on Wales Rally GB recently, using Pirelli Scorpion gravel tires. AUTODROMO Jose Carlos Pace Minimum Starting Pressure Slicks 22.5 Psi Front 20.0 Psi Rear EOS Camber Limit 3.25 Degrees Front 2.00 Degrees Rear Form Guide Brazil should provide a competitive race, with Red Bull, Ferrari and Mercedes likely to all be in the hunt for victory. Brazil had proven to be a track which simply provided bad luck for Lewis Hamilton, but he finally grabbed his first victory here last year. If the frontrunners, Max Verstappen has certainly looked to be at one with the track in his appearances here so far, and he will be high on confidence heading into this weekend, after his wet weather master class last year he would look to be the man to beat should the rain fall. Ferrari have beaten themselves in recent races but with the pressure off Sebastian Vettel might finally be able to realize the Ferrari's potential, Sebastian has done well around Interlagos before. 
Further down the grid, now that Force Indy have secured fourth place, it will be interesting to see how their drivers behave while the St. Jolkenberg battle at Renault is bound to generate more interest. Memorable moments 1993 sent a surprise as Prost slips up at the end of 1992 Honda withdrew from F1, leaving McLaren without a works engine deal. Rather than walking away from the sport McLaren made do with a customer version of the Ford V8 Benetton having the rights to the latest specification of the Ford engine. Iron sent a WASNT committing to the cause, and initially appeared on a race-by-race -race basis only. At the opening round of the season in South Africa, Senna had put in a spirited display, scampering away from the grid to take the lead and defending fiercely throughout the race against first Prost and then the factory Ford-powered Benetton of Michael Schumacher. Despite Senna's best efforts he could only come home a distant second to the much faster williams Reno of arch-rival Alain Prost, Schumacher getting a lesson in muscular defensive driving from Senna as the Benetton spun into retirement whilst trying to pass Senna for second place. Arriving for his home race in Brazil, there could not have been much hope for victory for Senna. McLaren were pushing to try to get engine parity with Benetton, but Benetton were having nothing of it yet. Flavio Briatore surely knowing the value of a contract Williams locked out the front row in qualifying, Prost easily ahead of his inexperienced teammate Damon Hill, with Senna managing to edge out Schumacher to take third, but a whopping 1.8 seconds slower than Prost in the dominant Renault-powered Williams. As the race began Prost got away cleanly, while Senna snatched second place from Hill with an aggressive dive down the inside of Turn 1. Michael Schumacher dropped back into Turn 1, losing out to the Ferrari of Gina Lassi and the Sauber of J.J. Leto, although Schumacher would quickly get by Leto and start harassing Alessi. Behind, the second McLaren of Michael Andretti got tangled up with the Ferrari of Gerhard Berger as they accelerated off the grid, with both cars smashing off into the barriers on the outside of Turn 1, with Andretti's McLaren spinning through the air as it bounced off the wall. Prost eased off into the distance, the McLaren not able to keep pace, and Senna soon started to come under pressure from Damon Hill in the second Williams, the McLaren surely easy prey for the mighty Williams Renault, the battle closely followed by Schumacher, who had dispatched Alessi on the second lap to join the hunt in fourth place. Just as in South Africa, Senna did all he could to resist the faster cars, but with Prost escaping into the distance it seemed like a lost cause, and inevitably Hill passed Senna, diving down the inside into turn one on lap 11. By now Prost had already a dominant 9-second advantage over Hill, and Schumacher's Benetton was now tucked up behind Senna to keep the pressure on the McLaren star, with a large gap back to Alessi, who was having a battle with the two sobbers of Leto and Carl Wendlinger. The race up front seemed a foregone conclusion, the Williams in a class of their own, and Schumacher looking sure to pass Senna. Leto and Wendlinger provided interest by managing to get by Elisa's Ferrari. Senna's day seemed to be going from bad to worse as he was handed a stop-and-go penalty for overtaking the lap LaRusse of Eric Comas under yellow flags. Senna served his penalty on lap 25, and rejoined in fourth behind Schumacher, but the race was now turned on its head as it started raining on the track. With the rain starting to get heavier Senna was the first of the front runners to duck into the pits for wets, coming in on lap 27. Prost stayed out but Hill was in on lap 28. With conditions worsening the safety car was deployed after Aguri Suzuki Futork and Yukio Katayama Tyrell came to grief on the main straight on lap 28, both clouding into the wall in separate incidents. With the safety car coming out it seemed logical to expect race leader Alain Prost to pit for wets but he continued on past the pits after a mix-up with the Williams pit crew, a mistake that would cost him the race. Shortly after crossing the line, well before the safety car could pick him up, Prost was sliding off the track at turn one, bumping into the stationary minority of Christian Fittipaldi which had spun in front of him, and coming to a slow halt into the gravel. Prost was out as the safety car picked up the field, it was Hill leading from Senna, then Schumacher who had pitted last of the leaders and lost further time with a poor stop, Alessi, Johnny Herbert in the first Lotus, J.J. Aletto and Alessandro Zanardi in the second Lotus. The race restarted on lap 37, with the track still wet but with dry sections around the circuit. Hill eased away as Senna dived past the lap Derek Warwick's footwork to latch immediately onto Hill's gearbox into the first corner. But Hill did and succumbed to the pressure and managed to open a gap to the McLaren. The track was drying out by the lap however, and Senna came in for slicks at the end of lap 40, already three seconds down on Hill, with Schumacher in the pits for slicks immediately behind. Senna Hill pitted the next lap, and rejoined ahead of Senna. Senna was pushing hard and managed to brush past Hill before Hill got his slicks up to speed, the McLaren darting past in determined fashion on the wet side of the track. 
Alessi and Schumacher were both hit with stop-and-go penalties, and when the order had shaken out it was Senna leading from Hill, with Johnny Herbert who had stopped for slicks as soon as the safety car pulled off up to a fine third from Philippe Alliot in the LaRousse and J.J. Aleto in the Sauber. Senna eased clear of Hill, who seemed to have settled for second place, and there was no more challenge at the front as Senna would go on to record a famous home victory. Behind him Aliot dropped back and the Saubers both dropped out, a disappointing end for the Swiss team who were competing in F1 for the first year in 1993. Mark Blundell in the Ligier was coming on strong, up to fourth behind Herbert, but Michael Schumacher was coming on stronger, with Schumacher hunting down Blundell and passing him into turn one on lap 65. On lap 69, Schumacher pulled out of Herbert's slipstream to pass him into turn 4, only for Herbert to cut back inside him as the Benetton ran wide, Herbert regaining the place on the run down into turn 5. Schumacher WASNT to be denied, and took the position for good on the penultimate lap into turn 1, the two having gone wheel to wheel down the straight, but Schumacher prevailed, locking up his Benetton as he braked late into the corner to pass keep ahead of the Lotus and secure the final podium position. For Herbert, fourth equaled his previous best result obtained on his debut, the 1989 Brazilian Grand Prix in Rio, while Mark Blundell came fifth, with Alessandro Zanardi taking what would be his only Formula One championship point in sixth place. But the day belonged to Senna, who had taken a shock win, and in so doing put his underpowered McLaren into a surprise lead of the Drivers' Championship. 2008 Misery for Massa as Hamilton is champion coming into the final race of the 2008 season, McLaren's Lewis Hamilton seemed to have his hand on his first driver's title, needing only a fifth-place finish to guarantee the title over Felipe Massa in the Ferrari, but after his experience in 2007, when he had seen a 17-point lead over Ferrari's Kimi Raikkonen evaporate with two races and 20 points to go, he would be taking nothing for granted, in qualifying Felipe Massa kept his hopes alive with a pole positin, while Hamilton was in fourth place place behind Toyota's Yarno Trolley second in the second Ferrari of Kimi Raikkonen. On race day it rained, and the field lined up on the grid on wet weather tires. The first four got off the line in order, but the racing was stopped before it could get going, with the safety car deployed on the first lap after a couple of crashes behind the front runners. David Coulthard's Formula One career being ended by the team that gave him his break as he was hit by both the Williams cars, and Nelson Piquet spinning his Renault out all by himself. Giancarlo Fisichella took advantage of the safety car to pit for Inters on lap 2, with the safety car pulling off on lap 4. Fisichella began to top the times, and one by one the cars started to come in for Inters. Ferrari pulled Massa in first of the front runners on lap 10, while McLaren brought in Kovalainen and left Hamilton for the next lap, pitting just behind Raikkonen and Trulli. When the stops had played out Hamilton was down in 7th, McLaren playing it overly cautious to avoid a DNF that would gift the title to a Ferrari driver for the second straight year. Massa led with Sebastian Vettel who had made ground after stopping on lap 7 in the Toro Rosso chasing him down, followed by Fernando Alonso Renault, also pitted on lap 7, Kimi Raikkonen, Giancarlo Fisichella, Jarno Trulli then Hamilton. Needing only fifth place though things were soon back under control, with Lewis getting by trolley quickly as Yarno slid wide into turn one, and then moving into the all-important fifth position, pulling out of Fisichella's slipstream and taking the inside position into turn one. Vettel was continuing to apply pressure on Massa, but it was no relief to Massa when he pitted on lap 27 having started on a lighter fuel load Vettel would have to pit twice for fuel, as this promoted Hamilton to fourth. Massa pitted for fuel on lap 38, with Hamilton following on lap 40, and by the time Sebastian Vettel had made his second stop on lap 51, the order was Massa leading from Alonso, Raikkonen and Hamilton. Lewis seemed secure in his bid for the title, but then the rain returned, Massa was comfortable in front at this stage, but Hamilton had been coming under pressure from Vettel for fourth. Never mind, he still had a position to spare, but when the rain fell this all changed, as Toyota rolled the dice and left their cars out on track while the front runners pitted for wet tires. This meant Timo Glock got the jump on Hamilton, and Nalwis was fifth. Fifth became sixth when Sebastian Vettel passed him in on lap 69 as Lewis ran wide at turn 12 in the tricky conditions. If things finished as they were Massa would be champion Hamilton tried to stay with Vettel, but DIDNT looked like he could regain his position, and as they crossed the line for the start of the last lap it looked like Massa would pull off a remarkable championship win, with Vettel holding off Hamilton and the next car up the road of Team O'Glock some 13 seconds ahead of Vettel. Massa crossed the line to take the win from Alonso and Raikkonen, and as the Ferrari camp celebrated an unlikely championship, the unthinkable happened. 
As the rain continued to fall, Glock in fourth was struggling to keep his car on the track, and as he reached the end of the lap, first Vettel, then Hamilton surged by him, with Hamilton taking the fifth place he needed for the title at the same corner where he had lost the position to Vettel a few laps earlier, diving up the inside as this time Glock struggled to keep his car on the circuit it was a heartbreaking end for Felipe Massa at his home race, who ended the year with six wins to Hamilton's five but came up agonizingly short of the title, but it was redemption for Lewis, who had so cruelly lost the title the previous season in Brazil when it seemed he had it sewn up with two races to go. Support races The Porsche Cup will be provide the background entertainment in Brazil. Previous results Year Winner Constructor 2016 Lewis Hamilton Mercedes 2015 Nico Rosberg Mercedes 2014 Nico Rosberg Mercedes 2013 Sebastian Vettel Red Bull Renault 2012 Jensen Button McLaren Mercedes 2011 Mark Webber Red Bull Renault 2010 Sebastian Vettel Red Bull Renault 2009 Mark Webber Red Bull Renault 2008 Felipe Massa Ferrari 2007 Kimi Raikkonen Ferrari 2006 Felipe Massa Ferrari